Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to your favorite girl on the internet. That's me, by the way. If you are new here, my name is Jasmine Rosette. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 things that have helped me lose 30 pounds. But before we get into today's video, I would ask that you subscribe so you can stay up to date with your favorite girl on the internet. As we've already established, that is me. So subscribe. <laughs> If you like any part of this video, give me a thumbs up. I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. That helps me out and helps me know to continue making videos like this. And leave me a comment. I would love if you said hi. I say hi back. I won't bite. I'm not scary. I respond. So without any further ado, let's get into today's video. So I have my phone here that's going to help me keep track of all the 10 things that I want to talk about in today's video that helped me personally lose 30 pounds. I will say none of these 10 tips, these 10 items, these 10 things, whatever you want to call them, are in a particular order. They don't have like a hierarchy in what is the most important to least important. These are just 10 things that I noticed for myself that helped me in my weight loss journey. And hopefully it can help you. So if it doesn't work for you, don't come for me. These are just purely suggestions. I am not, you know, a licensed nutritionist. I am not a fitness professional. These were things that helped me personally on my weight loss journey. And I'm just sharing them with you because hopefully they can help you with your weight loss journey. So yeah, now let's get into the first thing, which let me just check my phone. It is taking it slow. So for me, it is more, when I say taking it slow, I mean having a healthy mindset. I feel like for the longest time I was very apathetic. I, you know, had really lofty goals of I'm going to lose 60 pounds in like three months, which is for some people it works. But for me personally, I don't think is the healthiest um way to go about it because i feel like the quicker you lose weight the quicker it is to put it back on again and for me i finally got to a point where i was just like this is a journey i can no longer think of my weight loss as a race because i'm not racing with anybody this is purely for my benefit so i really have to take hold of the reins and think of this as a journey because after I lose the desired weight that I have, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue on this fitness journey because I say weight loss journey because that is the stage of my fitness journey that I'm currently at, but entirely it is a fitness journey. I am looking to be the healthiest that I can be both inside and outside, but also so that I can live a long, healthy life and be able to do activities that I want to do. So for me, it's, it's about taking it slow. And so when I finally got that mindset of just like, okay, this could be a year long process or it could be a couple years, but I can't just give up because in the past, when I would lose 10 pounds, it would take like, I don't know, a month or maybe a couple weeks. And then I would just lose interest because it wasn't going at the pace that I wanted it to go because my goal in the past was like, 60 pounds in a month or three months, which is just really unrealistic for me. I mean, if you're eating completely, 100% of the time clean, it can work, I guess. But for me, I just wanted it to be of a thing where if I'm gonna lose weight slowly, I want that weight to not come back fast. So if I lose it slowly, it's gonna come back slowly. And it's going to be easier for me to see the foods that I'm eating and understand like what I need to do in order to lose the weight. And it was more so about mindset than anything else and just not rushing the process. I just had to trust in the process and not rush anything at all. And that really helped my mindset. That helped me keep myself healthy and have healthier goals and not go to extremes. Number two is clean eating 90% of the time. Don't deprive yourself because that can cause failure. Clean eating, I would say 90% of the time worked for me, but if I just went on straight on, straight up denying myself of all the foods that I really like to eat, 
I would fail. Because quitting things cold turkey doesn't work out for anybody. I would say slowly getting into, you know, clean eating by taking out certain processed foods. So for me, clean eating means whole nutritious ingredients. So that means vegetables, that means whole, you know, lean proteins, um, grains. It, it means like no chips, no candy. I'm not saying that I deprive myself completely of that because I said 90% of the time. And if you've watched my weight loss journey videos, you know, my monthly recaps of what those look like, you know, I'm not depriving myself. Like sometimes I go in too much and I don't see the results, but if I limit myself to like once a week and have that time to like have that cheat meal, then I'm good. The third thing is drinking a lot of water. I cannot tell you how this has changed my life. Drinking so much water, like truly, I have a caffeine sensitivity, and so a lot of my friends rely on coffee in the morning to wake them up. I rely heavily on water. Water legit wakes me up in the morning. Like, it keeps me awake, and if I feel a little bit more sluggish, then yeah, I'll have like a caffeinated drink, which is more so like a matcha latte, because straight up coffee just gives me the shakes. I can't, your girl can't hang with that. I can do it every now and then, but too much and my heart is just like, we stopping? <laughs> and I don't want my heart to stop. You know what I'm saying? I wanna keep going. But drinking lots of water, it not only helps, you know, flush out the toxins that are in your body, it also helps, it, like it has other benefits besides just keeping you hydrated. It helps with clearing your skin and it helps getting rid of like the toxins that like, you know, the impurities that show up on your skin, as well as like helping with your gut health. You need to drink, I would say like 70% of your body weight in ounces of water a day. So if you are not there yet, don't just go from zero to 100 because that is not healthy. I will say work your way up to start having like a cup of water a day for a week and then up it by another cup the next week and another cup the, the week after that until you're drinking about one to two liters of water a day, which is what I do and it helps. And drinking water before each meal, like it's gonna help you feel fuller so you're not overeating. And also like it's gonna keep you hydrated because majority of the time when you're thinking that you're hungry, your body is really just telling you that it's dehydrated and it needs water. So when you're like, oh, I need more snacks, after you just ate a really big meal or even just ate a normal standardized meal and you're still feeling hungry, drink water. So my suggestion is drink a glass of water before your meal and right after and just wait 15 minutes. And if you're still starving, then have a snack. But don't be going ham because majority of the time your body is just telling you that it's dehydrated. The fourth thing is consistency. Consistency is the key to success in anything in, that you do in everything in life. If you want to be, you know, the fastest person, be consistent in your running. If you want to be, you know, really good at something, be consistent. That whole Outliers book, um, I believe it's by Matt, Matthew Ald Aldwell, ah man. I, I can't remember his the author's name, but it's, it's a book called The Outliers and he talks about this 10,000 hours kind of idea where people who are really good, say like Bill Gates, the reason why he is such a genius is because he put in 10,000 hours. And 10,000 hours means that you are consistently working on this task, on this hobby in order to become a genius at it or the top of the top or professional same thing with like basketball players who are really good like michael jordan is an obvious one lebron james kobe bryant steph kurt like all of those guys are really good and at the top of their game because they put in the thousands and thousands of hours because they were consistent and they fought through the times where they were fatigued, they fought through the times where they didn't want to do it, they disliked it, and they pushed, 
they pushed past and were just ended up being great. You can be naturally good at something and, you know, put in a little bit of effort, but it's never going to compare to someone who's consistently putting in all their effort and going in at it every single day, day in and day out. You're going to yield results. So if you put in the work, you're going to yield the result. It's just it's just a matter of fact. So if you're trying to get better at you know, learning a new skill in terms of cooking, you're putting in the work, obviously like reaching out to people that could help you, either professionals, if you need a nutritional, you know, a nutritionist or a dietitian, go out to them, look and see if it is covered in your health plan and and go out to them and, and do the copay and be like, hey, like I'm trying to lose weight. These are my goals. What can I do? Can you show me what the foods that I should be eating? In my suggestion, it's really just cutting out the processed foods. If you know that you're eating chips every day or if you are having ice cream every day, consistently that is adding to your weight gain. That is not going to add to your weight loss. It's going to take away from your weight loss. So if you take that out, that's one less thing that is weighing you down and allowing you to be able to lose weight is taking that processed food out of your diet, at least consistently. If you're not going to put in the work and not going to sacrifice, it's not going to happen. Number five, this one I've done for the longest time since like college, meal prepping. Meal prepping, like if you don't like it, I would say just maybe meal prep a day or two in advance so that you're not doing it for the entire week if you're worried about food being like not as fresh. But meal prepping is key. It's going to set you up for success. If you are constantly eating out all the time, you're not likely going to make the healthiest of decisions. And if you are able to afford it, then yes, you can uh, eat out all the time and make healthier decisions, but it costs a lot of money. So for me personally, I want to save money one. That's just uh, number one. But I also want to eat healthy and I want to know exactly what's going into my food. I don't want to have to do the guesswork of, oh, did they use this? Did they use that? Is it going to add to this? Like, I don't want to worry about the salt content. I don't want to worry if there could be, you know, weird processed things in there. Like, I know exactly what's going into my food and I know exactly how it's getting prepared. And so it's always going to be clean if I'm going to make it. And it's going to be a simple meal. It's not going to be anything fancy. Like, you don't need to be fancy with your meal preps. You can be. They don't have to be, you know, really nice. They can just be simple and still be delicious at the same time. So meal prepping is is number number five on here on the list, but it's it sets you up for success. And, you know, by consistently doing it, like I said in the previous one, like all of these are adding on to each other. I hope you guys are seeing that. Like all of these things go hand in hand with each other. It's not something that you do separately. It's all of them go together. They have a good marriage, you know? But yeah, meal prepping definitely really helped me because I knew exactly what was going into my body. I knew how much of it I was eating. I could control my portions easily that way and not have to worry about, oh, I go to a restaurant, they give me a really huge portion and my eyes get bigger than my stomach. So then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna eat all of this. Whereas when I'm grocery shopping, I can see and I can portion out exactly how much food that I need for myself that day or that week. And it just, it helps keep costs down. It saves a ton of money. If you're looking to save money, meal prep. Like, it's it's going to be good. And you, and you just do it for maybe like 30 to 45 minutes. I usually like to bake things or, you know, just th bake them for like 30, 45 minutes, like my protein and my vegetables in the oven so I don't have to worry about it. And then I come back and all of it's done. I just season it, make sure it's like clean, and then I distribute it in my glass containers, my reusable glass containers. And it's a more sustainable way of, you know, eating, in my opinion. Like, try it. Just, just give it a chance. If you don't like doing it for an entire week, just do it a couple days in advance. And you notice 
you'll notice that you'll start making healthier decisions with your food. Number six is a good support system, meaning your family and your friends. Tell people in your life that, hey, like I'm trying to lose weight right now. I'm trying to keep, you know, eat clean. They don't have to keep you, like they don't have to watch you like a hawk and be like, hey, you're eating candy. They can just be supportive. They can just be that nice presence. If people are making fun of you, you know, for trying to attain a weight loss goal or being on a weight loss journey or having a fitness goal, cut them out of your life. You need people in your life that are gonna support you and support the things that you're doing. And if it means having a healthier lifestyle, they should be supportive of that. And if they're not, they're not your friend. Your friend would want you to be healthier and would be like, you know what, maybe I don't really understand, but I'm still gonna cheer you on and hope for success for you. And maybe I can like get you some like healthier treats or you know, treat you to like a meal prepping service like HelloFresh or Blue Apron or whatever is out there. Um, having supportive friends and family is a key. For me, like, my grandma really supports me, especially when I go home and she's seen me lose weight. She's just like, okay, now that you're here, we're not gonna be eating out at like Whataburger or In-N-Out. Um, we're gonna eat healthy and I'm gonna make sure I buy groceries for you in the house that are clean so that I'm not adding to your weight gain. And then if I tell my friends here, you know, when I'm back in Colorado, that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, have like this because I'm trying to lose weight. They're like, oh, like I thought you were eating healthy. Like, should we not, you know, go get desserts or go get like this candy, you know, type of thing. Like they're very, very supportive of me on my weight loss journey. Number seven is rest days, recovery. These are vital. If you are working out, your body needs time to recover. If you're working out every single day, seven days a week, your body is taking no time to rest. And your body needs to be able to rest to kind of build up muscle and be able to lose fat. The number, there's like several things that aid in weight loss besides eating healthy and drinking lots of water and obviously working out. Like, you don't really have to work out to lose weight. You can just eat healthy and the weight can come off. But if you are working out especially, your body needs that time to rest and be able to digest and process what it went through the day before and kind of leave it in its sleep. Like, your metabolism starts kicking up in your sleep. There's so many studies out there just make sure that you're getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep if you can if you're normally a person who gets three to four hours of sleep aim for five to six get just rest i try to aim for seven and a half hours of sleep every night sometimes i get eight but i also don't work out on the weekends and i take about three days off a week so my body is having that time to recover to kind of restore itself and then build itself up again and be able to lose that fat and keep that weight off weight loss is about like you need to be able to recover and your body is going through a lot of trauma when it's at the gym so it needs time to kind of understand that trauma and adjust and then continue moving forward. So recovery, just just do it. At least get seven to eight hours of sleep and take a couple rest days off, like two to three rest days a week. If only one rest day really is what you're aiming for, then do one rest day, but truly just rest and relax. Number eight, working out three to four times a week. If you are a person who doesn't work out now, it doesn't have to be you going from sitting on the couch all the time to doing a CrossFit gym the next day. That's not what I'm saying. You could go out for a walk near your, you know, near your house or in your neighborhood for 30 minutes and just do that. Or even sign up, go to Planet Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness, Gold's Gym. There's, you know, the YMCA. There's so many gyms that are very affordable or even free if you just go outside and walk and it's good weather conditions, just walk for 30 minutes. That's all you really need to do. If you have a dog, that's perfect. Just go on a longer walk. 
you know, just doing some sort of cardio activity or weightlifting activity is going to help you in losing that weight because that is what has helped me is 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 working out three to four times a week um i lose more and i am more consistent and the weight i see comes off a lot faster in addition to me eating healthier by working out so working out three to four times a week i will say is a healthy amount that's exactly what i do i don't work out five to six times a week i don't work out every single day three to four times a week is all that I need and I don't need to do any more than that at least for right now I mean I could I guess work out five times a week but I at least like to have one day during the week where I sleep in and I think that's necessary and really nice and a luxury but you know I'm just saying three to four times a week even if it's just walking for 30 minutes or you know jumping rope if you have little weights at home just do a quick arm workout or even just start with doing like burpees. That is a full body workout. A burpee is a full body workout. It will help with your abs, it will help with your legs, and it helps with your arms. Like it legitimately works out your full body. They are hard to do, I'm not gonna lie, they're difficult for me to do, but the more you start doing it, the more that you are consistent at it, the better you will get, and then you will see that your strength will start to skyrocket up and you'll be able to do it at a lot faster rate. So just work out, just just put in the work. Even if it is 20 minutes, there's so many resources for you that are free on YouTube. So if you buy weights that you have at home with like a jump rope and a resistance band, which you can get for cheap at Walmart, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, Goodwill, a thrift store, like there's so many places that have cheap, affordable weights and resistance bands and if you need workout gear walmart tj maxx marshall's ross all of those places have very very affordable workout clothes in varying sizes so just just do it just be like nike and just do it not sponsored by nike but you know i won't deny it <laughs> and then number nine for me personally having a keto like diet really really helped i am a person who i discovered through a lot of trial and error before my weight really started coming off was just increasing my fat intake and i'm talking about healthy fats like avocados and salmon like those are healthy fats that you can incorporate into your into your diet and just having like a higher amount of those helped me lose weight so for me in the morning i typically have like avocado on toast and avocado is a healthy fat and i have that with an egg so protein and then bacon which is protein but also high in fat um i have pork bacon i don't do turkey bacon because turkey bacon doesn't have as much fat as the pork does um but that's typically it in terms of my red meat intake i don't really eat a lot of red meat i'm more of a fish person but lately i've been eating a lot of chicken and then you know i kind of switch it up like the first half of the year i have a lot of fish and then the second half of the year i have a lot of chicken i just try to switch it up depending on what i'm going for but yeah that's like the only thing that i really rely on to like help my fat intake is you know with the bacon one slice of bacon in the morning and then half of an avocado a large avocado and then for lunch and dinner it would be like some salmon which is like the size of my palm it's a good protein amount or even like the size of your four fingers is a good like pro your fingers here together is a good protein amount you can do that but I would either have chicken or salmon and salmon has so much good fat for you omega threes and fatty acid like it's 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 high in fat it's really good so a keto diet is is having more fat than anything else in your diet because your your body is trying to burn fat and all it's intaking is fat so then it's burning it a lot quicker whereas carbs and protein it, your body stores that more where if you're eating a higher fat you know diet like the keto diet um your body is using fat as its fuel to burn it to to burn off to kind of run through as its energy source so if you're 
if you have fat to burn and you're eating healthier fats, you're gonna burn that off a lot quicker and more consistently. So basically what I'm saying is a lower carb intake and a higher fat is going to be your key. And I'm talking about healthy fats. I'm not talking about like processed foods, candy, none of that stuff. Healthy, whole, nutritious fats are going to be your friend. And I don't fully go on a keto diet because for me, that's just not that sustainable. I just do a keto-like diet. So I can still have the things that I want and not get that weird illness flu that everyone gets when they cheat on the keto diet to stay in the you know ketosis state or whatever. I'm, I don't do any of that because that's just really, really extreme. And personally, in my opinion, not super healthy. I just do higher in fats. And if I meet that goal, I don't, you know, I, that's great. If I don't meet that goal, I'm not, you know, upset about it. So yeah. The last thing I will say, this has been key for me in losing weight and could be very helpful for you. Intermittent fasting. So basically what that means is that you have, I think, 14 to 16 hours, maybe like 12 to 16 hours that you are fasting and then you have like a short, like the rest of that time is your window to eat. So for me, I like to eat between the hours of eight o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the afternoon. So that is my window to eat. So I have my breakfast at eight and then I fast for four hours and then I'll eat around 12, one o'clock and then I fast another four hours and I eat at five. So I fast in between and that is key. And then from five till eight o'clock the next day, I haven't eaten anything. And then that's when I start eating. So for me, that has been really, really helpful because then it limits the amount of times that I'm having snacks. And I'm keeping my main meals of the day, my times of eating, instead of snacking continuously and not allowing my, my body to go into like, you know, like not allowing my body to kind of up its me metabolism. That is what has worked for me. The intermittent fasting is eating at eight, eating at 12 and eating at five o'clock and then not eating in between that. And if I want like a treat, I eat it with that meal. I don't eat it like an hour or two later. I eat it together with that meal. So if it's like 15 to 30 minutes of me just straight eating and I take my time chewing my food because I want it to digest properly and not be like real chunky and make my, my you know, intestines and my digestion system work harder. I want it to work smarter. So I'm chewing my food thoroughly, but yeah. Those are the 10 things that helped me lose weight, helped me lose the 30 pounds. And hopefully they work for you. If they don't, I'm sorry, but I feel like they should work for everyone because I think like it's gonna, it's gonna set you up for success. Like you're, you're gonna do great. So I'm just gonna go over them one more time. Number one is taking it slow. Number two, clean eating 90% of the time. Number three, drinking a lot of water. Number four, consistency. Number five, meal prepping. Number six, a good support system. Number seven, rest days. Number eight, working out three to four times a week. Number nine, a keto-like diet. And number 10, intermittent fasting. So hopefully that helps you guys. And yeah, leave me a comment down below if it does or if it doesn't, or what you think of my 10 tips to do. Don't forget to stay kind, stay true, and stay laughing. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. Cupid, don't with me. Are you telling me this is a sign? She's looking in my eyes. And I don't see no other guys. Are you telling me this is a sign?